Miss Aurora is back. Miss Aurora told you she was going to keep this thing rolling. And it's a little bit after 4 a.m. And King David's like all the way awake right now. Secured Entrepreneurs. This next book is by the same author, Keenan Bridges. This man is amazing. He's an amazing writer. I believe he's a, an amazing spiritual warrior as well. This book is Overcoming Familiar Spirits. Okay. And I was like, okay, this is just so perfect for the secured entrepreneurs who are consistently saying, you know, it's just weird that I start things, can never finish them. I start things, it looks like it's a go, it gets to whomever it's supposed to get to and it's halted. Or, you know, I'm doing everything that I know to do. Other people have gotten these great results. I did the same exact thing. I, I followed the steps. I followed the instructions and it did not happen for me. And Mr. Aurora has already spoken with the secured entrepreneurs previously about preventative spirits, spirits of delay. Okay. And so in this book, Keenan Bridges gets into these familiar spirits that are ancestral things that spirits that are consistently around generationally uh, that are aimed towards your demise. Okay. So some of the things in the book, some of the ways that he has written things in this book, I don't 100%, 100 agree with some of the language and I'll, I'll point some of that out. Uh, but for the most part, yes, on point with a lot of these spirits that are plaguing many of us, many secured entrepreneurs, many entrepreneurs, many small business owners, many individuals who desire to get ahead in life. He's giving you the spiritual answers as to why it is you have been prevented in many ways. Okay. So I'm just going to go over the chapters and I'm going to get into some of the relevant things that I want to share in this video, but I, I want to encourage the secured entrepreneurs to go and get this book. Now it is written from a Christian perspective and, every, and all the secured entrepreneurs here know that this is a non-judgment zone. We want to acknowledge, explore and communicate uh, with everyone, whatever their spiritual or religious beliefs are. We, we want to grow an understanding of why people behave the way they behave, why they do certain rituals and things like that. Okay. So this is overcoming familiar spirits, deliverance from unseen demonic enemies and spiritual debt. There are 14 chapters. There's about 203 pages. So you see, he starts off with the unwanted guests, spiritual debt collectors, the authority of the believer, demonic portals, emotions, and thoughts, demonic portals, curses, and soul ties, healing the wounded soul, the power of the spoken word, the law of attraction, breaking ungodly soul ties and attachments, renouncing evil covenants and oaths, the power of the blood, the mind, our spiritual battleground, exposing hidden enemies, walking in total freedom. And then he's going to tell you about himself. What are familiar spirits? So he says, first, what exactly are familiar spirits? When the Bible mentions someone who consulted familiar spirits, it typically indicates a person who attempted to speak with a deceased individual or to an evil spiritual entity that emulated or impersonated an individual who was dead. The term is generally used to refer to the spirit of a dead person, which professed mediums claimed they could summon for consultation. And that's found in Deuteronomy 18, 11. The word familiar has in this phrase the sense of the Latin familiaris, belonging to one's family, and hence ready to serve one as a servant. Such a spirit was thought to be able to reveal the future. And he's telling you that that can be found in Isaiah 8, 19 and 1 Samuel 28, 7. In the ancient world, people would often consult individuals with familiar spirits in order to commune with the dead. The ungodly practice is called necromancy. 
And how many of the secured entrepreneurs know and, and have heard of necromancy? Okay. However, the dead they were communing with were not actually deceased persons, but rather evil spirits or demons. In the Old Testament, the Israelites were warned against consorting with familiar spirits and those who dealt with the realm of darkness. And when they shall say to you, seek to them that have familiar spirits and to wizards that peep, whisper, and that mutter, should not a people seek to their God for the living to the dead? And that's in Isaiah 8, 19. And then he quotes another scripture. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. And that's in Leviticus 19, 31. Throughout the New Testament, the existence and activity of unclean spirits is recorded. See, for example, Matthew 10, 1, Mark 1, 23 to 27, Luke 9, 37 to 42. Many of these unclean spirits are familiar spirits too, called by a different name. It is important to understand that the name of a spirit is associated with this behavior or function. Thus, an unclean spirit defiles or contaminates the person it attacks, possesses, or oppresses. Whether familiar spirits enter people's lives through necromancy or other avenues that we will discuss in this book, they always have a nefarious assignment as evidenced by the pain and havoc they produce in the lives of their victims. And then he gets into why are they called familiar spirits? These evil spirits are called familiar because they are attached to specific individuals, families, bloodlines, or places. And Mr. Roy's going to tell you a story. The Bible makes reference to generational curses or generational iniquity and the presence of sinful patterns in people's lives. And when he's saying sinful and sin here, it, we, all, we already know it just means that you've missed the mark in your life. You're missing the mark in your life. You're basically sinning against yourself in that instance. For example, even though David was forgiven by God for his sins of adultery and murder, a number of his children, including Ammon and Solomon, fell into sexual perversion. And he's telling you to see, for example, 2 Samuel 13, 1 through 20 and 1 Kings 11, 1 through 11. The reason why familiar spirits have so much insight into family members and the reason why some people struggle with the same type of affliction over and over again is that the spirits have been assigned to that particular family line and are instructed to watch its members. A familiar spirit has an attachment to a particular area or areas of a person's life. They are acquainted with the person's mindsets and patterns of living. Unless these spirits are forced to leave by the authority and power of God, they are able to attack family bloodlines for generations. How many of the secured entrepreneurs are having this experience, have had this experience, or know individuals who are experiencing these patterns of the same thing happening to people generation after generation. So you see Keenan Bridges here is letting us know what this is about. Let us go on. The origin of unclean spirits, unclean spirits or demons originate from the kingdom of darkness, the kingdom of that age old foe, the devil. Now I'm going to pause here because a lot of people have a problem with that. That just saying the devil, they have a problem with that because Throughout the King James Version of the Bible, and I've read many versions, I don't see the word the devil. I, I, I'm consistently reading evil, even in the Our Father prayer. Deliver us from evil, okay? That there's no place that points to it is a devil. There's one scripture that a lot of people like to quote where uh, I think Christ is, is saying, 
to to individuals that they are like their father. They're not talking about his father, which we, which we would say is the most high. Okay. We have people who quote that scripture, but still never the word devil. So we, so we know that a lot of people have issue with that, but die hard Christian people, they have a thing for it. They have a thing for it. So we're going to, what do they say? Eat the meat and spit out the bones on, on this one. If in fact you don't adhere to, to that. And I know that a lot of uh, the individuals that I know who are practicing Jehovah's Witnesses, they do not teach devil talk either for a variety of reasons. And I, 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 won't, I won't get into that whole, cause I can go down a, a large rabbit hole on that, <laughs> but not in this video. Let us go on. Scripture describes the devil as ancient. See Revelation 20 verse two. He is ancient because he has been around since before the beginning of the human race. Certain theologians and other students of the Bible believe there were fallen angels on earth before Adam and Eve were created. See, for example, Isaiah 14, 12 to 14, Ezekiel 28, 15 to 19 and Revelation 12 to 9. Regardless of your theological position on the origin of demons, and when they first arrived on earth, it is important to understand without equivocation that familiar spirits are demons on assignment from Satan to hinder and attack human beings. These spirits are very real and they are very evil. Think of them as invisible entities who have a mind, a will and emotions and who are able to inhabit, influence and even torment their human hosts. They are able to inflict people with sickness and disease. They are able to cause confusion, depression, and despair. Okay. Now that we know what familiar spirits are, I want to go back to the beginning of chapter one. I want to get into unwanted guests for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. People all over the world, including many dedicated Christians, are struggling in cyclical patterns of defeat. They are silently crying out, why do I keep going through this issue? Time and time again, they spend a large portion of their lives struggling with various sins, difficulties, and types of spiritual bondage. It might be continual conflict in their marriage, a prolonged inability to conceive, incessant financial difficulties, a sense of being mirrored in the past, or any one of a number of other issues. They constantly live with frustration, worry, anger, or a sense of hopelessness, thinking there is no way out. They may even feel that some type of evil manifestation is oppressing them. Over the years, as a pastor, teacher, and counselor, I have come across many such individuals and their burdens have become my burden. I began to ask the Lord why these cyclical patterns were occurring. And he faithfully shared answers with me as I grew spiritually in my own personal experiences, studied God's word and ministered to his people. Through all of my questions and seeking, I came to the realization that millions of people are being tormented by demonic powers called familiar spirits that hide behind the mental and emotional framework of their victims. These spirits operate inconspicuously within the fabric of people's mindsets, thoughts, and emotions to a degree that they are undetected by their hosts. Now, secured entrepreneurs, you know, Mr. Rory just got finished telling you all in the last video that the hotel thing is not the move for me. I don't do well in hotels and there is no one who has stayed with Mr. Rory in a, in a hotel that has had a peaceful night rest. I promise you that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because how many of the secured entrepreneurs know that there is energy everywhere. There's energy, this energy stuck in those rooms. And I'm going to say something, I'm going to say something, and this might be, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to clean it up because I don't think I can say that some of these words on YouTube, but, um, I believe that 
a lot of the energy, the spirits that are in a lot of these rooms in hotels have to do with the fact that people perform unorthodox or relations. They have relations, unnatural relations. That's what I'm going to say. They have all sorts of unnatural relations and that this is not to offend anybody because it doesn't matter to me what you're doing in there. But what's happening is that energy is left in those spaces, energy, a whole lot of energy. And if you are sensitive to energy, the way Miss Aurora is, you're going to catch it and you're going to catch it in a bad way. Now, as I was sharing with you all, some of the things that happened to me there in France, I had another incident. Now, I, I, I previously shared that the trip was, was, was delayed by one day because of the woman at the airport who decided she wanted to cancel my flight. She was hating on King David and I had to book another flight and all of this. Okay, so I arrived at the hotel one day late, one day behind schedule because I definitely was not late. And so roll up to this hotel. It's a spa. It's beautiful. You know, I'm videotaping it. I'm like, oh, wow. Look, King David, this is so beautiful. It's so nice. You know, all oh, the lobby was so uh, cute and swank and boutique -ish. And King David was running all around and I was chasing him all around. And, you know, it was at night. It was at night. So I think we, yeah, I think we were the only ones in the lobby and everything. And the room looked so nice. And, you know, I mean, I, I, I have to rave about the hospitality at this hotel. Every person who worked at this hotel was just lovely. I cannot, I'm telling you, I, it was an irreplaceable trip. Okay. So because of the debacle at the airport the day before, I repacked because now I had a different flying situation. I did not have sage. I did not have incense. I did not have my white candle. I, you know, I, I wasn't, I didn't have my spiritual tools because I already know I'm going to have, I, I'm, I, I know there's going to be some issues. Okay. So the first night I walk in there, I told the spirits in the room, listen, y'all could do what y'all do in here. I'm not trying to bother you with all of that, but I'm not in here for that. And I don't want, I'm not trying to do this. So I'm just letting you know now that, you know, don't start. No, won't be none. It's basically what I start saying. Okay. So the first night, no one bothered Miss Aurora. You know, the, the bed wasn't as comfortable as, as I would like a bed, but I'm always conscious of the fact now, now this, I don't want to, I don't want to make anybody feel icky or offend anybody. But the reality is this particular bed that you're, that you're in, Thousands of people have been on this mattress. Thousands of people have laid their head on those pillows. Okay. I don't know how they disinfect mattresses. I don't know how they disinfect pillows. Okay. But I had to start implementing some things for myself when I go to these places for, for, you know, cleanliness and spirituality and all that stuff like that. So anyhow, the first night, nobody bothered me. The second night, nobody bothered me. I want to say it was the third or the fourth night. The individuals that I began to text after this happened to me would, would be the, the people to attest what night it was. Because when I have things like this happen to me, I wake everybody up. Everybody's going to hear about this, right? So a majority of the people who have spent time with Miss Aurora know that, that when I'm in the bed, I'm going to be listening to some form of personal development for the most part. Now, normally if I, if I have a guest, I'm not really going to put on the type of things that I would really be listening to when I'm by myself. I, I will put on like maybe comedy or something because other people are hearing it. Okay. So while I'm there, I'm listening to some personal development and I record, how many of the security entrepreneurs record yourself? Do you record yourself? Do you record 
yourself, the things that you need to teach yourself, the things that you need to know about, the things that you study, you record yourself. So I record myself, you know, and I'm falling asleep to my own voice. Well, all of a sudden, and this, this is rare, I, very, I, I never really get deep sleep at a hotel, ever. But I began to fall into this very deep sleep. And so now I'm going on an astral travel. My first spiritual teacher calls me Aurora the Explorer <laughs> because of my astral traveling ability. So I astral travel to this place. I do not know what time. I do not know what reality. I do not know what dimension. All I know is there were two human beings and I like to see human beings. I don't like to astral travel and see other beings. And then we're, we're sitting there communicating with each other and it's just like, an interrogation and I can't ever figure out am I interrogating you or are you interrogating me <laughs> anyway so these are two human people so it's a man and a woman and the woman is a seer and the woman is telling the man what she saw for the second time she saw an incident happen for the now Mr. Rose ear hustling I am ear hustling because I want to hear what she sees right so she's saying to the man you know, I don't know if I should report this or not because you, who's going to believe me? And the man is saying to her, uh, this is the second time you saw the same exact thing. It's time for us to call the police because we have to get help for this situation. And I'm, and I'm telling you, I'm waiting. I see him pick up a phone and what I, what, and I was really paying attention because he didn't pick up a cell phone. He picked up a phone on the side of the bed, just like at a hotel. So I'm like, oh, I must have traveled into somebody's hotel room because he's picking up the phone on the side of the bed. And he's going to call the police. I'm paying attention to this. As I'm paying attention, the woman can see me. She can see me looking at her and she acknowledges me. And I'm acknowledging her. In that moment, secured entrepreneurs, some spirit that was in the room began to bear hug my physical body. And I'm talking like the arm, one arm was here at my neck, the other arm was at my waist. And the leg, you know how you, you will put your leg around somebody's body, but, but they were squeezing me tight. And I started to feel the suffocation in my physical body. So I jumped back in my body. I jumped and I was still wiggling to get, to get away from the grip of the spirit. And I jumped out of the bed and I said, all right, now you got a choice. You can leave willfully or I'm going to be forced to throw down the law in here, right here, right now. Who's ready? Right. You know, so I'm talking so much trash, right? So now, you know, you don't go to sleep after that. Now it's like, let me just go on and walk the dog and wait for seven o'clock. Cause you know, I'm going down for breakfast. Right. So I'm, I'm just, it's, it's done. It's done now. It's done. Right. That night I go down and I, and I, and every night I would talk to the guy who was on third shift because he would help me with my map and getting places. And I tell the guy what happened to me the night before he goes, Oh, do you know that the man who owned this hotel Beautiful, sweet man. Oh my gosh, he was the best. Everyone loved him. He loved everybody. That man loved this hotel. And he would stay in the room next to yours. I said, really? He said, I bet you that was him. I said, now wait one moment. Wait one moment. Because now I've got to get it straight. Why, why do you think that he would want to, you know, grab me like that? Why, well, you know, cause, cause, cause you're telling me that he stayed in the room next to mine, not that room. Okay. He said, yeah, but who would be up there like that? Who, who would be up there to, you know, not understanding that it, 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 it was a, it was a strong grip, it, you know, not understanding that, you know, it, it, it was going to startle you. Maybe not even understanding that they are not in, in this realm anymore, that they're just sleeping in a bed. They rolled over. You happen to be there. So first I was grateful for the fact that the man didn't think I was a stone cold nut. That's number one. Thank you. Secured entrepreneurs. Comment below. <laughs> okay, right. 
and he was 100% with it. Okay, he was like, mm-hmm, because that man loved to talk. And if you're up there, uh, working up there, to which I was, I'm listening to things. He said, yeah, he, he, he was into that. Okay, so Mr. Aurora was just sharing that story because this happens to a lot of us. This happens to a lot of us because what we don't understand is that the spirit realm is far more real than this physical realm. We know that there are three Nobel Prize winners today who have proven that this is a simulation. So seeing that that is a truth, that this is a simulation, there is no, there are no questions. There is no doubt. That means that I am designed to win this game. That means that I get the opportunity to take control over my thoughts, my visions, my ambitions, my desires, my wants, all of that. I am the magician. I am overcoming every obstacle. And now that I understand, I am Miss Pac-Man. Hello, I'm chopping up these monsters, right? Okay, because that's what the man is telling us in this book, that these spirits, these entities are designed to come after us for certain reasons at certain times to to cause us to be delusional, to cause us to be depressed, to cause us to have fear, to cause us to doubt. OK, to cause us to get stopped in our tracks relating to what it is we are here and are designed to actually do on this planet during the time that we are here, any time that we are here, for those of us who understand what reincarnation really is. Okay. I am the winner of this game. And I'm telling you, this gentleman is, he, he's lighting it up. I'm going to, I'm going to, one more, because this is going to answer the question for everyone who's saying, what's going on with my money? What's happening with my money? Let's get into chapter two, which is spiritual debt collectors. Because I guarantee that many of the secured entrepreneurs, your back is being written by a spiritual debt collector. Was that the correct word written or was it road or, you know, hey, you got the monkey on your back. The monkey on the back is real. The monkey is dark and he is wearing a, a red t-shirt and black shorts. <laughs> okay. I'm not, I, I can't make this up. Okay. He is the monkey and he is huge and he is there. Okay. So let's get into the spiritual debt collectors and talk about how you're going to get free so that your money flow in 2024 can, can do what it needs to do in your direction, okay? And his Lord was angry and delivered him to the tormentors till he should pay all that was due to him. That's in Matthew 18, 34. You would have to read that whole story. I don't know why uh, this gentleman chose to put that, that smaller scripture in here, but here we go. Has someone you know ever been threatened with legal action by a debt collector because they owed money but we're having a difficult time paying it back. Have you ever personally had the uncomfortable experience of being repeatedly called by a debt collector over a certain outstanding bill? A debt collector is a person or a company that regularly seeks to collect money on behalf of a third party on debts that people owe. Usually when those debts are past due, the regulations that govern the actions of debt collectors vary from state to state and from country to country. In America, companies have the legal right to collect the debt when a person breaches a contractual agreement and becomes delinquent on an account or a financial obligation they had previously agreed to pay. In many cases, debt collectors will continue to pursue the debt until it is paid, discharged, or forgiven. Spiritual debt. Familiar spirits are like debt collectors because they pursue people who are in breach of spiritual covenants or agreements and have fallen into spiritual debt. They are empowered to do this because in one way or another, they have a legal claim to that debt in the spiritual realm. In other words, familiar spirits work to identify a spiritual debt or legal breach, and then they execute their wicked agendas against the ignorant souls who have often unknowingly incurred these debts. 
The English word debt comes from the Latin de debutum, which means something owed. Debt simply refers to an amount that is past due or owed. In the natural world, when there is an outstanding debt, it means that someone has failed to pay something they were responsible for reimbursing. The person who owes is required to discharge that debt when there are legal grounds to obligate them to pay it. In the spiritual realm, many believers are seeing demonic attacks and even bondage on their lives or the lives of their loved ones because of oppressive spiritual debt they have incurred. When people have, in one way or another, violated their covenant with God, and come into agreement with demonic powers, they can unknowingly open themselves to such spiritual debt and consequently to satanic debt collectors. Throughout this book, I discuss different forms of spiritual debt and its causes, demonstrating how to identify those debts and have them discharged or released so you can live in freedom. Okay, now this is under demonic liens. I'm going to bring it down to the third paragraph. Just as there are liens in the natural world, there are liens in the spiritual realm. God showed me that many believers are subject to demonic liens. And this is why certain things that should be happening in their lives cannot happen. This is why some women have been praying for years about wanting a spouse, but they cannot get married. This is why some couples have been praying for children, but the wives are unable to conceive. This is why some people's lives and ministries cannot gain enough momentum to get off of the ground. A familiar spirit has infiltrated an area of their lives and it must be removed through spiritual force. Thus, when spiritual liens against you and or your bloodline go unaddressed, this can create an opportunity for demonic spirits to attach themselves to your life and destiny. But God desires for you to be free of oppression and bondage in every area of your life. I don't know about you, but I want to live a debt-free life, not only materially, but also spiritually. The Bible says the rich rules over the poor and the borrower is the servant to the lender. That's Proverbs 22, 7. Whenever a person is in debt, they are enslaved to the one they are indebted to. We are called to be the bond servants of Christ alone, not the servants of the devil, sin, or our emotions. Jesus paid our debt in full and released us from the curse and penalty of sin. But again, Satan, the accuser of the brethren, that's Revelation 12, 10, can place liens on the lives and destinies of God's people when they have in some way participated in iniquitous contracts and ungodly covenants. Even though a person is born again, they can still be afflicted by familiar spirits because they have unknowingly and sometimes knowingly come into agreement with satanic powers. Then you see he gets into the demonic access points. He discusses spiritual jurisdiction. He, he's also discussing the door of sin. And again, uh, here we're really talking about you missing the mark. Sin is missing the mark, missing where you're supposed to be in life. You're not, you're not where you're supposed to be because you've allowed these things to occur. Okay. In this chapter, he's also getting into the confession and cleansing. He talks about how the Lord brings death, but the spirit brings life. And then he gives you a prayer for release. And here it is. And of course, you're going to bring the fire to this prayer of release. Heavenly Father, thank you for releasing me of my debt to you as my creator through the efficacy of the shed blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Because of Jesus, I am under a new covenant that gives me power and authority over Satan and familiar spirits. Therefore, I ask that you would forgive me for any ways in which I have violated my covenant with you and opened myself to spiritual debt. Forgive me for any areas of my life that I have not submitted to the spirit of God out of stubbornness or self-will that have led to bondage through demonic agreements and for any doors I may have unknowingly opened in my life. I ask the Holy Spirit to reveal those areas to me. Your word says in Revelation 3, 7, that Jesus is the one who has the key of David. What he opens, no one can close. And what he closes, no one can open. Therefore, I ask you, Lord, to close all doors to the demonic realm that I have illegally opened. I declare that I am free by faith and through the blood of Jesus Christ. So it is. Now, like Miss Aurora is saying, of course, if you know that you are in a true spiritual battle 
and you desire to have the release, I think that that prayer is helpful, but you definitely have to put the fire on that prayer. I didn't feel throughout this book. I didn't really feel the fire on the prayers the way that the prayers are written in the previous book that we just went through the 30 prayers, the 30 prayers. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll put it up here because now I, I, I'm, I'm really, I want to get into the last thing for this video because this is some real stuff. How many of you is this happening to right now? How many of you know people that this is happening to or has had this happen to them? Okay. Miss Aurora knows people personally in this very moment that I'm talking ha has been just flat out given money. They don't even know what they did to deserve the money. Okay. They don't even know. They didn't even know that they, they were in the running to get this money. The money just came to them. They could not keep the money. And I'm talking large. I'm talking some of these people got inheritance, inheritance money. Okay. They inherited the money. I know several people, a parent died. There was life insurance. They got a large sum of money. Several people had to move from places where they were grandfathered in, but the place was now going to go a uh, co-op or condo and they got paid a large sum of money to move out. They cannot keep the money. Some of these people, I'm talking the money was stolen, like out the bank. Okay. And it, and it had to do with the fact that they were not financially astute. Number one, number two, there was a spiritual debt. There was spiritual debt that was spilling over in the physical realm. And, and some of them knew about it. Some of them were very well aware of it and never did anything to alleviate themselves of the issue so that when new money came in, they would be able to do what they needed to do, invest the money, you know, do the right things with the money so that they could, you know, have a better life for themselves, their children, whatever. It did not happen. Okay. And so when I read this book and I read the chapter on spiritual death, I said, now this makes so much sense. It makes so much sense. So secured entrepreneurs, first of all, I'm going to recommend this book. You know, I don't get a dime for recommending these books. I don't have an account where you guys can, can buy these books. I get all the books from Amazon or Barnes and Nobles. And everybody knows I love to have a real book. So most of the time I'm hanging out at Barnes and Nobles. <laughs> okay. And I'm buying a lot of these books at Barnes and Nobles. So. I'm going to say to the secured entrepreneurs that if you know this is you, because I'm reading your email, so now some, some of you know that this is you, please do some, at least some of the things that this gentleman is saying in the book, you got to now start backtracking, retracing your steps. Where is it that you left a gate open to be attacked in the area of your finances, to be attacked in the area of business, to be attacked. Okay. In the area of uh, your, your willingness to get work done, but then you are, you are mistreated. And that, that happens to a lot of us. You will go places, you're doing your all, you're doing everything they asked you to do. You're going above and beyond. And all you're asking for is a decent day, a decent day pay without being abused or whatever, but all heck breaks, breaks loose wherever you go. <laughs> okay. So these are the things. So that's what I want to share in this morning's 3 a.m. shenanigans. I'm going to do, I'm going to do this, this other like real awesome book tomorrow morning. Okay. But until then, you all know you can find me, Mr. Aurora Day at AuroraDayConsulting.com. And until next time, ta-ta.